I'm Roger Magulis here at Strata 2018 in New York City, and I'm here with Amr Awadala, who's the founder and CTO of Cloudera. Welcome. Thank you. So last year at, uh, at Strata, you talked about the automation of decisions. Mm -hmm. Pretty big subject. Yep. Do you think enterprises have gotten any better at moving in that direction? Uh, they are. We're, we're still at the beginning. To, to be honest, we are still absolutely at the beginning. Uh, we, we typically draw a pyramid of the hierarchy of needs slash uh, readiness of organizations to really reach the, the, the top of the pyramid, which is automation of decisions. And there are so many uh, foundational stuff you need to get through first before you can reach that. And I would say 90% of the world is still down here, right? They're still trying to figure out how do we have uh, smooth uh, data collection frameworks, how do we have smooth um, storage and uh, clean up of the data, transformation of the data, just normal analytics. L like you'd be amazed at how many organizations are still down in that in, in, in that part of the pyramid. But the, the top of the pyramid, which is the automation of decisions, or more commonly referred to as AI, uh, I would say maybe 10% of our customer base, I would truly call as, wow, mm -hmm. like that's impressive stuff that you're doing. Okay, just to reinforce what we said before, I was at a dinner last night where mm -hmm. everyone said getting the data ready yeah. and organized is still their number one job. Exactly. So <laughs> I think that that's, that's yeah, still yeah. true. Yeah. So you know, looking past the hype, mm -hmm. are there, you know, what are the tangible real life applications for this new world of, of yeah. AI? Uh, so it really is the automation of decisions. So, uh, b and by that I mean collecting data around how we as humans make decisions and then uh, use machine learning to automate some of that. Not all of that, but at least rep automate the repeatable, uh, repetitive stuff. So for example, one of the most popular use cases uh, that truly really illustrate that is uh, JP Morgan, uh, where JP Morgan uh, have a, has a system called COIN, C-O-I-N. Can't remember the exact acronym what it stands a for. A good can, acronym can see though how for JP Morgan bank. Coin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what they did is they looked at the contracts that their uh, lawyers have been reviewing with their partners over the last couple of decades. And uh, they were able to replace 400,000 lawyer hours going forward with just the machine uh, in 10 seconds, reviewing the, uh, not 10 seconds, sorry, 10 minutes, reviewing the contracts and doing the amendments and doing the changes for all the repetitive stuff. Now the lawyers still get invoked, but they only get invoked for the, uh, there is no precedent, it's something new, we never knew how to handle this in the past, mm -hmm. and now we need somebody to intellectually uh, judge this to make, to make a conclusion. So that's one example uh, w which I think really speaks to the automation of decisions. Uh, another one comes from one of our winners from, uh, yesterday we had a ceremony like the Oscars, but the Oscars of big data, we call it the, the Data Impact Awards, and the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, they won. Uh, one of the awards, and uh, they have many, many use cases, but one of the fun use cases they have is they looked at the agents that they have in the actual physical branches, and some of these agents, about 5% of them, are really, really good at selling mortgages. When a customer comes in looking for a mortgage, they usually don't leave until they have a mortgage in their hand from these agents, but only 5% of the agents are able to do that. The remaining 95% are not even close to being as good as them. So what they did is they heavily instrumented these 5%, to look at what they say, the way they ask their questions, the way when the customer responds back, how they respond back to them. They automated them, uh, everything around them, and, and then now using machine learning, they're able to push back r recommendation scripts to the, the remaining 95% to get the average performance of these agents to be much, much higher. Now the human is still there to convey the message, yeah. but they're really being told what the message is, mm -hmm. depending on the data of the customer and what the, the, the more advanced agents would have said to that customer. So these are the examples, and it's happening around us everywhere, in every field, not just, yeah, both the examples I picked right now are banking, but this is happening in, in healthcare, it's happening in agriculture, it's happening in manufacturing, uh, it's happening in construction, you name it. All industries are trying to look at how their engineers, their lawyers and doctors are making decisions and how can we take the, the best thought process of the best of the humans and automate that. Mm -hmm. It's something kind of the classic augmentation story. Yeah, absolutely. That not yeah. replacing, but, yes. but making people better. I mean, it, it does drive efficiency. I mean, if you look at the global scheme of things, it does drive more efficiency, which means that w there is some replacement taking place, uh, but it's not full replacement. Right, yeah. right. So you mentioned some uh, examples, but what are other some like Cloudera use cases of machine learning and AI? I mean, both of these are Cloudera use cases. So both of yeah. these use cases right. I mentioned were done using the Cloudera platform. Now, we internally at Cloudera, we also preach, uh, uh, do what we preach. So we have a customer uh, 360 platform internally 
where we collect all the data around our customers. Uh, so the finance data from the finance systems, the sales data from the Salesforce uh, systems, we use Salesforce, <laughs> the, the customer support data coming in from the support systems, the, the each of our customers as they're running our software, it beacons back information metrics around these clusters that we also collect. Mm -hmm. And then using that internally, we are very uh, capable of predicting who are the customers that are now uh, more likely to expand or more likely to uh, start a new use case so that we can proactively reach out to them and convert them faster. In a sense, this is automating the decision of the salespeople, right? So augmenting our salespeople with this brain that's sitting behind them that is telling them now it's time to go and have that conversation. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now I bet that helps inform this, what you are able to then tell that your customers. Exactly, which makes the process much more efficient and much more faster yeah. than normal. Yeah. So we know from our own research that the cloud is, well it's been around for a while, is increasingly <laughs> popular, Yes. right? So why is Cloudera going all in on the hybrid cloud? Because our name is Cloudera. <laughs> so I mean, uh, we have the cloud in our name. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, uh, I mean some public stats first, uh, about uh, 25 to 28 percent of our customer workloads are already running in the cloud. Uh, but still, I mean, the flip side of that is that the majority and more than a majority of our customer workloads are still on-premise, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of the back office critical data needs happen still within organizations. The cloud is getting more, much more active, uh, more on the front-end applications as opposed to the back-end back office data. Uh, but even that also started to shift uh, as evidenced by this 25 to 28%. So uh, our vision of the future uh, I mean, this gets me on the rant, and I'm sorry to, to do this, but... Rant pu away. <laughs> First, I actually don't like the term public cloud. People use it, it's a, it's a genius marketing term by Amazon, Azure, and other public clouds, because when you go to Disneyland and you pay them money to go to Disneyland, do we call it a public park? No, it's not a public park. It's a paid park, right, that, right. You, that you can go to. So in the same sense, public clouds, they're not really public clouds, they're paid clouds that you can leverage f f to, your to your own advantage. So that's number one. Number two is, uh, our customers are, are, are wanting, uh, want to avoid the mistakes that they have done with some of the mega vendors of the past. And I'm, I'm going to pick on IBM specifically. So IBM was very nice 100 years ago, but as you started to embed much more deeper with their APIs, with their proprietary logic, and build all of your apps on their platform, you become locked in. And when you become locked in, that's when you lose all leverage in terms of no negotiation for pricing. You have to pay whatever they say, because right. for you to go and rewrite all of that would take forever. So our approach is, as we take customers to the cloud, we want to enable for them the hybrid aspect, meaning that you can move the workload very easily. Mm -hmm. Yes, you still have to copy the data, which has some logistic logistics, but at least the workload, the applications, you don't need to rewrite them. You can move them from cloud one to cloud two to on-premise. And uh, almost all of our customers are totally bought into that. Yes, that makes sense. I, I want to learn from the mistakes of the past that I have done with some of these mega vendors and make sure that as we now re-architect our platforms for the future, meaning the cloud, that we retain now the ability to have leverage in terms of mm -hmm. pricing. It doesn't mean that I want to move away from Amazon. I'm, I'm, I love Amazon, I want to stay from Amazon. I'm just picking Amazon here as an example. But I want to have the option, if Amazon ever were to come to me and say, hey, my pricing now is up by 50%, to tell them, eh, no, I'm not going to pay 50%. Right. And, and, and be able to confidently say that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're all in hybrid cloud. Great. Yeah. That sounds great. Sounds like you guys are making great progress on yeah. both the cloud and the AI front. Oh, absolutely. So thanks a lot for uh, being here. Before, before we wrap up, I mean, uh, one very key point as right. well. Please. Uh, I'm sorry to do that. Is, is also uh, not just ML and cloud, but one of our uh, key areas of focus, and in fact our biggest money making uh, uh, part of Cloudera right now, is our data warehousing aspects as well. And we did a, we did a rebrand recently where we used to call it Analytical DB, was the name we used, but we found that uh, most people don't think what is an Analytical DB, they really think data warehousing. So right now we're very active in terms of our data warehousing uh, mm -hmm. initiatives as well. So ML, cloud, data warehousing. Great. You know, I worked on data warehousing when it was called data warehousing, so yeah. I it relate goes to the away. term. <laughs> yeah, I relate to the term very well. Yeah, so. cool. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks again for talking to us today. Oh, thank you. It's, it's nice to be here. Okay.